Welcome back to the Lab Rat Lab. Now today is part of my lesson on the method of joints for analyzing truss structures. I'm gonna analyze and test some simple balsa wood bridges. Now this is the result of one of my bridge tests. So you can see they're pretty destructive and it's kind of fun. So let's go ahead and start taking a look at how I analyze and then test balsa wood bridge structures. Here are the three bridge structures I'm gonna test. First of all is my control. I'm gonna test a simple plank bridge. It's made out of uh, several sticks of uh, balsa wood glued together at three points, and it has the same weight as my truss bridges. And that allows me to make a fair comparison between the strength to weight ratio of the three configurations. Now I've got two truss bridges, and this is the uh, one I've analyzed. You'll notice that it has the vertical members uh, in the structure itself. And the second truss bridge uh, is the same configuration, except I do not have those vertical members. Now, if you look at the end of the bridge, you'll notice I have no diagonals connecting one truss side to the other. I didn't want to corrupt the analysis by transferring loads back and forth between the vertical trusses. I'm trying to test just the truss structure itself. Now, let's take a look at test rig and see how I'm going to test these bridges. Here's my test setup. And what I've got is I've got two uh, two by fours clamped to my lab table. And on these two by fours, I've attached uh, two horizontal support bars. What I can do is I can place my uh, bridge across these supports. And uh, there's a 11 inch gap between my bridge supports. I've got a uh, nice rigid two by two. I'm gonna insert through the structure. And this two by two will allow me to have a nice distributed load being applied to my bridge. So I'm not squishing or trying to spread things apart. I've got a container here, which I will uh, suspend from that two by two. What I'm going to do is put rocks in this container until I can take the bridge to failure. And then I can weigh that bucket and see how much load I had in there and see what the failure load was. And I'll do that for all three bridges, and then make a comparison between them. Now let's go ahead and take a quick look at the method of joints analysis for my simple balsa wood bridge structures. Now I'm not going to go into super detail on the analysis, but I recommend that you go to labratscientific.com and take a look at the classroom lesson on analyzing bridge structures and get better insight for how you do the analysis. Here's a load case I'll be analyzing for my truss bridge. My bridge is spanning an 11 inch gap, and I'm gonna have a distributed load of two pounds located at the center of the bridge. Now as a reminder, here's the sign conventions I'll be using. Any Y forces that are pointing upwards are positive, and any Y forces pointing downwards are negative. And for X forces, if it's pointing to the right, it's a positive force, if it's pointing to the left, it's a negative force. Now here's an example of those forces you can see on my bridge. The green arrow is showing a positive direction. The red arrow is also positive. The purple arrow at the top is a negative direction. And the negative direction is shown in the uh, light blue arrow at the far, far right. Now, here's the uh, convention for compression and tension. If the force arrow is pointing towards the joint, that means the member is in compression. And if the force arrow in the uh, member is pointing away from the joint, that member is in tension. Now we're also gonna to need to use trigonometry in this analysis. So here's a quick review. I encourage you to uh, review your uh, right triangle trigonometry. We also need to keep in mind that this is a static problem. Static means it's not moving. So any of the forces in the Y or X direction need to ultimately add up to zero. So there's no net external force. Now let's take a look at the free body diagram for my bridge. Here's my bridge structure. And I have the uh, two pound distributed load being distributed over points C and F. So I have one pound downward each. Now for the bridge to be in static equilibrium, meaning it's not moving, I've got to have upward forces supporting the bridge. So at points A and then the point at the far right you'll have a one pound force pushing upwards. Now you see that the upward forces are equal and opposite to the downward forces. So there's no net external force, so the bridge is in static equilibrium. Now, for the method of joints, we analyze each joint separately. So we're gonna start off with point A because we have a upward force of one pound, that is a known, and that will help us calculate the other forces at point A. So here's the free body diagram for point A. I have the one pound upward force with the green arrow. 
Then member AB is producing a force to the downward direction. That's the purple arrow. And the uh, member AC is producing a force which might be pointing towards the left. Again, I assume those senses for those directions of those forces in the members. And my mathematics will tell me if that force direction is correct or if I need to flip them around. Now, first I'm going to analyze the forces in the y direction. You see the computations here. I set those forces equal to zero. And I go through the mathematics and I find out that the force in member AB is 1.4 pounds. Again, the mathematics has generated a positive 1.4 pounds. So that means the sense of my force FAB is correct. So indeed, it is actually coming downward towards point A. Now, if I do the same analysis for the X direction, you see my mathematics here. I'm not gonna go through the details. You can study that on your own later on. And what you see is I have a FAC of minus 1.0 pounds. Okay, what that means is here's the original sensing direction of force FAC. And since this is a negative value, that means my sense is incorrect. So in reality, the sense of that force FAC is towards the right. So here are the correct forces in the members AB and AC. They have the magnitude, and now they have the correct sense or direction of that force. So force AB is pushing against point A, and force AC is pulling horizontally on point A. Now I can move on to point B. And here's the free body diagram for point B. And I just calculated this diagonal force coming into point B. That's FAB is equal to 1.4 pounds. I also have a member horizontal at the top, so that's giving me a force BD. And then I also have a diagonal force coming in, force BC. Now again, I'm assuming the sense for those forces, and we'll see if the mathematics tells us whether we're correct or need to flip them around. So again, I'm going to uh, sum forces in the y direction. I put in my values from my uh, triangles and my trigonometry here. I go through the mathematics and I get FBC is equal to minus 1.41 pounds. Now that's this diagonal force. This is the assumed sense of that force. And since I have a negative value, that tells me that sense is incorrect. So I need to flip that sense around. Now let's analyze the x direction forces. Once again, I do my right triangles. It's a little messy here, I know, but here's the mathematics. And ultimately, it produces a force BD, this horizontal force at the top of my truss structure, is zero. That means there's a zero load force in that member. Now, here's the uh, summary of the forces at point B. I have my diagonal force coming in. FAB is equal to 1.41 pounds. I have a 1.41 uh, pound force pulling away from point B. And then I have a zero force horizontally. So if I look at that, I can tell that the system is in static equilibrium. Now I can move on to point C. And you see there's a lot going on here. I have my known diagonal force here, FBC. I have my known force, FAC. And I have my known load on the bridge here of one pound. What I don't know is the forces in members CD and CF. I'm gonna do my calculations to see if we can figure those out. Now, once again, I'm gonna sum forces in the X direction. Here's my uh, terms put into it. I set that equal to zero. Go through the math and you'll see that I have FCF, the horizontal force here is zero. So that's a zero force member in the truss structure. Now I do the same for the Y direction. Put in my values, set that equal to zero, go through the computations you'll see that FCD is also zero. So there's actually no force in this vertical member CD. That's quite interesting. So here's a summary of the forces in the uh, truss members. Now force AB is uh, in compression at 1.41 pounds. And the uh, member CB is uh, actually in uh, tension and that's 1.41 pounds. 
I have my force AC here horizontally of one pound. That's in tension. Then the other members are uh, zero force members. Now, since this is a mirror of the structure, the same would hold true uh, for this side of the truss structure. Now, you may be tempted to conclude you don't need member BD or member DC in the structure because they carry zero load. And that may be the case, and it may not be the case. Now, a lot of times a zero force member is required for the structural integrity of the overall structure. However, it might be possible to remove this member, CD, and member EF, and still have a viable structure. Let's go ahead and build some bridges, do some testing to see if that's the case. Here's the three bridges I wanna test. First, I'm gonna have a simple plank bridge, which is uh, composed of uh, several parallel wood sticks glued together. Then I have a uh, truss structure here, which has these vertical members. And then a uh, truss structure here, which doesn't have the vertical members. Again, these were zero load members. So I'm gonna see if they're really needed in the structure. Here I am assembling the uh, trusses. I have a uh, paper template here that allows me to make them somewhat consistently. And then I use a, a block to help me uh, build the vertical sides so everything's nice and square or as square as possible. Now you see the differences in these two bridges. Here the uh, vertical members are missing and here there are vertical members. Now these uh, horizontal planks here just help to distribute the load of my uh, test setup. Now I weighed the uh, truss bridge and then determined how many horizontal uh, beams I needed for my simple plank bridge. I made sure the weights of the three bridges were the same. That gives me an idea that I have the same amount of material in the bridge. Now here's my test setup. I have my bridge spanning my 11 inch gap. I've got a very stiff uh, two by two here to distribute the load across my bridge and a bucket that I fill with uh, stones to add weight to the system. Now let's conduct some tests, look at some video and take a look at the results. I'm gonna test the simple plank bridge first. Now, as you watch the test, notice how much the bridge bends prior to breaking. It's pretty incredible. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show the tests in real time and then follow up with slow motion video of the actual bridge breaking. The plank bridge broke with a load of 8.0 pounds. That's pretty incredible on how much that bridge bent before failing. Now, a flexible structure like that plank bridge gives lots of warning that a failure is imminent. Now, if you're standing on a bridge like that and it started bending that much, you knew that something was about to go wrong. Now, let's take a look at a test of the bridge structure that included the vertical members. Now that bridge was really stiff and you hardly saw any flexure prior to failure. Now a bridge like that gives no warning that something bad is gonna happen. Now that bridge broke with a load of 12.6 pounds. Now let's test the bridge that didn't have the vertical members in the structure. Now that truss bridge wasn't as strong as the previous one. It failed at a load of 10.6 pounds. And that's actually a little bit lower than I expected. Now during that test, you should have noticed that that upper horizontal member started to flex just prior to the failure. Now if I had the vertical members in there, that would have prevented that member from bending. Now I analyzed the perfect structure. 
and that was supposed to have no load in that horizontal member at the top of the bridge. However, probably because of construction flaws and uh, angles that weren't exactly perpendicular to one another, it actually created some load in that upper member. And that load caused the uh, beam to bend and then ultimately fail, causing the bridge to fail at a lower load than the ideal bridge, which I previously tested. Now let's compare the load data from each of the three tests. Here's a summary of my results. You see that the plank bridge weighed 0 0.02 pounds, just like the other two bridges. It supported a uh, load of 8.0 pounds at failure. And that gives me a structural ratio, which is the load divided by the uh, bridge weight of 400. Now the truss bridge with the vertical members installed supported 12.6 pounds, giving me a structural ratio of 630. And the truss bridge without the vertical members supported 10.6 pounds, giving me a structural ratio of 530. Now what this tells me is that those no load vertical members were actually important to the structural integrity of the truss bridge. And you cannot eliminate those zero load members in all cases. They are necessary. So when you're designing a bridge, you need to keep that in mind. Even though you have zero load members, you cannot eliminate them from the design. Well, there you have it. Now, it should be obvious from my experiments that from time to time, your experimental results aren't going to match what you think is going to happen. But that's okay. Even in those situations, you're going to learn a lot by experimentation. Now, I want to encourage you to try to build and analyze your own balsa wood bridges and test them to see how strong they are. Well, that'll do it for this session. I hope to see you next time on LabRat Scientific.